let's take aquifers first. Most of Texas's land surface lies above aquifers. Some aquifers are large and some small. There are nine major aquifers in Texas. Here are the locations. As you can see, pretty much anywhere you live, you're going to be living over an aquifer. And there are 21 minor aquifers in Texas. A major aquifer contains large amounts of water spread across a large area. On the other hand, minor aquifers contain smaller amounts of water that can be spread over a large area or large amounts of water but spread over a small area. Aquifers are an important source of water for humans supplying about 60 percent of the water we use. Most of the water pumped from aquifers goes to agriculture to irrigate food crops. Over 80 percent of the irrigation water used in Texas comes from one aquifer, the Ogallala. This is the largest aquifer in the entire United States. The Ogallala stretches from South Dakota southward into Texas and underlies much of the Texas High Plains region. This aquifer's thickness averages 95 feet, although it can be over 800 feet thick in some places. The groundwater in some aquifers can be ancient. The Ogallala Aquifer was formed about two to six million years ago. Groundwater can also be very new. Water that falls as rain and enters the Edwards Aquifer near San Marcos, for example, can be found emerging from springs just a few days or even hours later. Parts of the Edwards Aquifer are like a giant underground cave system. Groundwater can flow like a river through large openings in the underground limestone and marble rock that forms this aquifer. Texas has three kinds of aquifers. The first are called unconfined aquifers. These are aquifers that are directly connected to the surface and have water levels dependent on relatively constant recharge. The groundwater flows to the surface whenever the aquifer's upper saturated layer, this is called the water table, rises to the level of the land surface. Perhaps the best known unconfined aquifer is the Ogallala. In many places, this aquifer is near the surface and recharge depends on water that collects at the surface and wetlands. As much as 95% of the recharge water in Texas comes from what are called playa lakes. A playa lake is a naturally occurring wetland. And these are small. They average only about 17 acres in size. These playa lakes are formed when rain fills small depressions in the prairie. There are about 20,000 playa lakes in the high plains of Texas. Here's a playa lake that's dry, and that's what happens. The playa lake fills when it rains. The water drains into the aquifer, or a lot of it will evaporate too. And then the playa lake goes dry until the next time it rains. The next kind of aquifer we're going to discuss are confined aquifers. Confined aquifers are saturated layers of pervious rock bounded above and below by largely impervious rock. Impervious rock is rock where water can't pass through. Pervious rock, well, water can pass through. This placement of the aquifer between impervious rock layers can squeeze the groundwater placing it under pressure. A confined aquifer containing water under pressure is called an artesian aquifer. Artesian flow is what feeds many of Texas's favorite springs, including the San Solomon Springs in West Texas. Here's a picture of those springs. 
The St. Solomon spring is the largest artesian form, or artesian spring, formed by geologic faults in the Balamorea area. And this is located in the foothills of the Davis Mountains in West Texas. This spring now feeds directly into the largest spring-fed swimming pool in the entire world. It's located in Balamorea State Park. After leaving the swimming pool, spring waters flow through the San Solomon Cienega. Here are some of the species that live there. This particular species here is the Mexican tetra. Also living in this desert wetland area are two endangered desert fish, the Pecos gambusia and the Camachi Springs pupfish. Pecos gambusia have a very limited distribution and the Camachi Springs pupfish are only found in the waters of the Balamaria Springs. The third kind of aquifer is called the karst aquifer. These are found in limestone and marble rock. Over long periods of time, limestone and marble can be dissolved away by water. This can leave large holes, channels, or even large underground caverns, lakes, and streams. One of the most famous aquifers in the world is the Edwards Aquifer. This is a confined karst aquifer flowing through limestone in central Texas. There are many well-known locations where water from this aquifer flows to the surface. In some places, cave entrances open directly onto the surface and lead deep into the Edwards Aquifer. Underwater divers have even explored some of the Edwards Aquifer's underwater caves and flowing rivers. Now this may just look like a cave, but there's water there. The water's so clear, you can't even see it. But watch this. There's a diver in there. This is Jacob's Well. This is an artesian spring of the Edwards Aquifer that flows from one of the most extensive underground water cave systems in Texas. The spring itself is a 12-foot opening on the bed of Cypress Creek, a few miles north of Wimberley. The mouth of the cave serves as a popular swimming hole. From the opening, Jacob's Well descends vertically about 30 feet. It continues on from there to a series of three large chambers separated by narrow passageways descending to a depth of at least 120 feet. Divers explored this cave and its aquatic ecosystem. These springs from the Edwards Aquifer feed Cypress Creek and Blue Hole. This is a very popular swimming hole in Wimberley. And then the water flows into the Blanco River about five miles downstream. I want to thank Jennifer Idle, the underwater designer, for taking these photographs.